Hey guys, welcome back. So in the previous video, we created uh, all of the assets that we will be using later on uh, in this video series. So we did most of our prep work. Uh, there'll be some other individual assets that we'll need to create later, later but we did most of the heavy lifting uh, in the previous video. Uh, in this video, we're gonna start working inside UMG. We're gonna build our display of our player condition, so our health, energy, and mood. We'll display that on screen. Uh, we'll also have that be affected by gameplay. So as the player character jumps, we'll deplete uh, the player character's energy value and have that reflected on our HUD as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go down inside the content browser here. We're going to go to our UMG folder, and we're going to open up our game HUD. So let's go ahead and double click, open our game HUD up. And my windows are kind of stretched around a little bit. Let me resize these. So we are now inside UMG. This is the designer tab of UMG. And we also have a graph tab. But let's talk about the designer tab for a moment. Uh, if you are brand new to UMG, I kind of wanted to walk through uh, some of the different panels and what we're looking at here and what they do, just to give you an introduction before, before we start uh, working inside of it. If you are familiar with UMG, you can kind of take this as a refresher. Uh, and hopefully, you can bear with us as we get through this. So uh, probably the first thing that draws your attention is this section in the middle. Uh, this graph section in the middle is the visual designer, essentially. Uh, anything that you place inside of here is going to be reflected uh, in-game. This is your visual way of laying out your UI elements to get an idea of what uh, your UI elements will look like in-game. Uh, so you can arrange things in here. Uh, this is the uh, current uh, aspect ratio that we are looking at. We can change that from the screen size option. So we can click this drop down and say we want to get an idea of what things will look like on an iPhone 5S in portrait. Uh, we could do so. So here is our canvas of what we are looking at. Let me set that back, actually, before I forget. Uh, <clears throat> so this is where we are going to do most of your visual constructing of your UI. Uh, to do that constructing, you're going to have to use widgets. And widgets can be assigned from the palette window on the far uh, upper left over here. And widgets consist of things like buttons and checkboxes and text and sliders. Uh, but there's also things like panels. Uh, and there's also input. We're not going to get into input. I'm not going to cover all of these. Uh, you can kind of mouse over and see what each one does. Uh, but there's all kinds of different widgets that you can use in here to construct your UI. Uh, mostly, you're going to be working inside of the common section or the panel section. And panels, the best way to describe these, panels act as kind of like containers for these common widgets. Uh, so you can place down, say, a scale box or a size box and put a button inside of it and then scale it, etc. cetera. Um, we're going to be working mostly in these two sections. Uh, directly below palette is the hierarchy. Hierarchy is very similar to the world outliner from the level uh, editor viewport. Uh, it's basically a parenting structure, so you can see what is parented to what. Uh, you can also hide uh, various aspects of your UI elements. If you have a lot of things on, on your screen and you're wanting to toggle on and off certain things, you can click the eye icon to toggle the visibility, which is pretty helpful. Uh, directly below that is the animation section. We're going to get to this later in the video series. Uh, it's the animation section in Sequencer, where you can keyframe and drive uh, the animation of your UI widgets. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be doing this a little bit later, so I won't get into it too much here. And then on the far right, we have the Details panel, which comes standard with any pretty much any editor inside uh, Unreal Engine 4. It allows you to change the properties. Uh, so for example, if you have a text, uh, widget on here. You can define the size of it, the color, the content of the text. All that can be decided inside the Details panel. Now, as I mentioned, we are currently on the Designer tab, which is used for the visual layout. If we hop over to the Graph tab, you're going to see it looks very similar to the Blueprint uh, interface. And uh, in fact, it's called a Widget Blueprint because you're going to be using the same uh, node network for providing the functionality of your UI. Uh, on the Graph tab. And we're going to get to this a little bit later, too, as well. So let's begin actually constructing our UI uh, visually. So let's hop back to the Designer tab. And what we're going to do is first go all the way over to the palette. And we're going to scroll down, and we're going to start out by using a horizontal box. So we're going to grab a horizontal box, and we're going to left click and drag that into the uh, graph over here, like so. 
I'm going to place it, and it will place it in our graph. It's currently empty. There's nothing populating it. So uh, we have dragged it into the uh, designer graph here, but you can also drag things directly into the hierarchy. So uh, the next thing that we're going to use is actually a vertical box. So let's find a vertical box under Panel. And we're going to left click, and we're going to drag and drop that on top of our horizontal box so that it is a child of our horizontal box. And the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to copy this vertical box. Let's select it. Let's select it and hit Control C. Select our horizontal box and hit Control V so that we have two vertical boxes inside of our horizontal box. Now, in each of these vertical boxes, we're going to have text in one and our progress bars in another. So what we are essentially saying is that we'll have uh, our health, energy, and condition displayed in one vertical box and three progress bars uh, inside of the other vertical box. And both of those progress, um, both of those vertical boxes are going to be aligned side by side inside of a horizontal box. So it's going to make things nice and neat and clean for us doing it in this fashion. You could drag a text block and place it here and then try and bring a progress bar and line it up right next to it, etc. But this is a cleaner and easier way of organizing uh, your common widgets by placing them inside of panels. So let's grab some text blocks now. Under the common section, I'm going to grab a text here, left click, and drag that into the top uh, vertical box. I'm going to select it now. I'm going to hit Control C, select our vertical box, and hit Control V twice so that we get three text blocks in there. Then going to grab a progress bar from the common section, left click, and drag that on top of our vertical box, the second vertical box that is. Going to select that progress bar, going to hit Control C, and then select the vertical box and hit Control V, Control V, so that we have three progress bars. So now if we select our horizontal box and we look inside our visual designer, we see that it's kind of not what we expect. Uh, the typical workflow is, I mean, this is a matter of preference, but the typical workflow is to throw all of the widgets and everything that you'll need inside the hierarchy from a much uh, quicker perspective of dragging them and arranging them and parent parenting them as you see fit inside the hierarchy. And then once you have all the elements that you need, then going back and kind of tweaking the visual look of uh, uh, your UI elements as you need to. So with a horizontal box selected, uh, let's uh, drag this little widget here so that we can scale it a little bit, like so. Now our progress bars are super small, and they're not actually filling out our horizontal box since we have changed the size of it. We can select our progress bar in the hierarchy and hold Shift and select the bottom one so that we get all three. And over in the Details panel on the far right, we can set them all to Fill. So under Size, Go ahead and change Auto to Fill instead. That's going to fill them vertically. Uh, but we also need to fill them uh, horizontally as well. So we're going to select the vertical box itself. And then over in the Details panel, let's set that to Fill as well. So that fills out our horizontal box. Now we're going to do the same thing for text. We're going to select all of our text uh, widgets here. And we're going to fill those. So over in the Details panel, go ahead and set that to Fill. And let's also adjust the uh, justification. Let's justify them to the right so they are horizontally aligned to the right, like so. And you can go and change the color of the text or the size. For right now, I think these are fine. We're going to leave these just like this. So with that, let's select the very top text block here because we need to change the contents of this. So over in the Details panel, you have the option to change the text content. Let's change this to health space, colon, space. Now, the reason I added that extra space, if I don't, let's say I delete it and I hit Enter, what you're going to see is that the, if I zoom in, our colon is kind of pushing up against our progress bar just for a cleaner look. Decided to add another space after it, and that's going to give us just a little bit of a buffer before we get to our progress bar. So let's select uh, the second text, and over in the Details panel, let's call this Energy space, colon, space, hit Enter. Everything's horizontally aligning to the right perfectly for us. Let's go ahead and select the bottom text block. Let's change this to Mood. So Mood, space, colon, space, Enter. So we have Health, Energy, and Mood set up. Uh, we need to define 
the colors for our progress bar. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to do in the hierarchy, uh, select all of them like I have now. And what you're going to see if you look in the details panel on the right, it's currently under our appearance. Fill color and opacity is currently set to a bluish color. But we're not actually seeing that reflected in game, or not in game, but in our graph here. The reason we're not seeing that is if we look up at the progress section under percent, this is used to determine the fill position of the progress bar. So it's currently set to zero, which is why we're not seeing anything. If I were to set this to one now and hit enter, now our progress bars are represented by that fill color. So temporarily, I'm going to keep this at one so that I can define and see what each of these colors will look like. So I'm going to deselect everything and select the top one for health. And we're going to change this color. Typically, these are green, so I click the uh, fill color uh, picker here. And I'm going to change this to green. You can now see that the colors are updating in real time, so I'm going to change this to a greenish color like so and hit OK. I'm going to select energy now, and let's change this to a yellowish color, something like so. Let me drag my color picker in, hit OK. And I think blue for mood is fine. We can leave that as it is. Now I'm going to reselect each of my progress bars again and set that percentage back to zero because this value is going to be driven by the properties inside of our player character blueprint. So let's set these back to zero and hit enter. And I think we are done visually setting up uh, our player condition. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is define the functionality of how these progress bars get filled. So to do that, if I select a progress bar and I go back and look at the percent section in the details panel, all the way to the right, there's an option called bind. And we can use this to bind this property value to something else. We can use functions. We can bind uh, this property to a function. We can bind it to properties inside of this particular uh, widget blueprint. We can also bind these to sub-object properties, so referencing another blueprint, for example. And that's what we're going to do in this instance here. So to do that, the first thing that we need to do is hop over to the graph. So let's go to the graph. And now we are inside the graph. And there's, some two, there's two nodes here by default. We are not going to worry about the event tick. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. But we are going to use this event construct. So uh, this is called after the underlying slate widget is constructed, as the tooltip says there. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to right click in the graph, and we're going to search for get player character. So get the player character. And once we have the player character, we need to determine what character blueprint is being used uh, for the, the player character. So to do that, we can drag off the return value here and use what is, a, what is called a cast node. So we're going to search for cast2. It's going to give us a couple options. But the second one from the top there is cast2 first person character. And that's the character blueprint that is used uh, with this template. So let's go ahead and select that. And let's drag this up. And let's left click and drag off the event construct and plug that into our cast node. Now, we could drag off this as first person character uh, return value here. And we could say set health. We could set health value now. Uh, same with energy and also with uh, our mood. All those values are accessible to us now. But we're not going to do that inside of this graph. We're actually going to bind it to those properties. So for reference later, because we're going to need this later, we need to create a reference to this uh, first person character blueprint blueprint that we are casting to here so that we don't have to, to cast every time we want to reference the first person character blueprint. So we're going to promote this to a variable. So let's right click on this pin and choose promote to variable. And over in the my blueprint panel, it's going to ask us to name this. So let's name it uh, character reference like so. And then I'm going to left click and drag a selection box around these. Hit C to create a comment and just say event con construct. So this is the event construct script, like so. And let's compile in the upper left over here and hop back to our designer tab. So we're at the 15 minute mark now. We are almost done. Uh, let's bind all of these progress bars now 
to the, to the uh, properties inside of our first person character blueprint. So select the very top progress bar, go over to the details panel under percent or under progress next to percent, click the bind drop down now, and you're going to see we have the option for sub object properties referring to that character reference. Now we can go down and select our health value and our energy and our mood. So let's go ahead and choose health value for the top one. You can see it has been applied. Let's do energy now. So let's go to the bind and let's do energy and then let's do mood. Like so. Okay, we are done. We can compile and save and close this blueprint for now. So to actually get this to display in game, we have created the widget blueprint, but we haven't told it to actually be displayed in game yet. So we're going to do that from our player character blueprint. So let's go to the content browser under first person BP, and let's go to the blueprints folder inside of it and our first person character blueprint. Let's go ahead and double click and open that up. And once we have that open, uh, let's see, first thing that we're going to do is Let's scroll up above all of this uh, script that's currently here, because all we're going to do is right click and search for event begin play. So when the game begins, call this, this node will get fired and execute uh, whatever's connected to this executable here. So in order to display the widget blueprint that we created for our game HUD, we need to use the node, if we drag off this and release, we need to use the node create widget. So create widget is the node that we want. So go ahead and select it. And it's going to ask us for a class. So you can click this drop down here. And this will display all of our widget blueprints that we created. So we want to use the game HUD. That's what we want to create. So go ahead and select game HUD. Like so. Don't need to worry about owning player for now. This is fine. Uh, now that we have created that widget, we want to store this as a variable so that we can reference it later as well. So we're going to right click on the return value here, promote to variable, and we're going to call this the game HUD reference, like so. And then once we've done so, uh, then we can drag off this pin here and say add to viewport. So choose the add to viewport function there. And this is going to display the widget that we are creating, our game HUD. So we are currently set, let's add a comment around all of this, hit C, and say uh, event begin play. Okay. And before we actually test this, I do want to make sure that our property values are being uh, updated uh, correctly. So we are going to modify the jump script that was uh, created with this template. So I'm right clicking and dragging and finding our jump script. Should be down towards the bottom. So there's our jump script right there. So I'm going to left click and drag that over a little bit, like so. <clears throat> and what we're going to do for this is just uh, decrease our energy value each time we jump. So I'm going to go to our energy value here in the My Blueprint panel. I'm going to hold Alt and drag in the energy value with Alt held down. Then release, that's going to allow us to set that uh, value. Then I'm going to hold Control and drag in energy value. So holding Control to drag it in, that's going to give us a getter. So we can get the current value and subtract an amount uh, that we specify before setting that as our new value. Before we do this, though, there's one thing that I want to do uh, that will help uh, down the road. Uh, we could set our energy uh, right here, right off of this uh, jump function here. However, we need to run a check to see if the player character is in the air, because we don't want the player character to be in the air, be able to press the jump button, and also uh, take away energy while they are in the air. We only want this to happen the first time they press the button uh, to jump. So uh, to do this, what we're going to do is go over to the My Blueprint panel, uh, we need to click this eye icon here. Actually, I don't think we need to do that. Let's go down to the My Character section. Nope, I was wrong. We do. I lied. Let's go up to the eye icon here and Show Inherited Variables. So go ahead and click this uh, Show Inherited Variables. That's going to give us access to all the inherited uh, variables that came with this blueprint. And if we go down under Character, there's an option for Character Movement. So let's go ahead and Control 
hold control and drag this in, left click and drag it in. And this holds all the information about uh, how fast the character is moving, the, uh, if they are jumping, or not jumping, if they are falling, uh, which we're going to use right now actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's drag off the character movement and search for is falling. This is going to tell us if the character is in the air or not. So go ahead and select uh, the is falling function. It's going to give us a Boolean return. I'm going to hold B on my keyboard and left click and create a branch. That's going to be our condition. So if we are falling, so let's connect our condition, uh, we are not going to do anything. We're going to leave true uh, with nothing on it. But if we are not falling, we're going to get our energy value here. We're going to drag off our energy value, hit a minus sign, and say float minus float. And we're going to subtract, let's say, 0.05 to start. Uh, you can play with this value however much you want to decrease uh, your energy value each time you jump. Uh, off the output on that minus, uh, float minus float, let's connect that to our energy now. And let's connect the false to the set, like so. And then off of our jump, let's connect the branch. And I'm just going to move all this over just a little bit so it's nice and neat and move our comments section down a little bit. So there we go. That is our new jump script. Let's go up to the top, compile, and save. And then let's close this blueprint and test this. So I'm going to play in the editor here, make sure my sound is down. So I'm going to play in the editor. Our health, energy, and mood bars are displayed. I could probably stretch those bars out a little bit to make them look a little bit longer in length but they are currently displaying our values that we've set. If I jump, my energy is depleted. I can't do it more than once. It only happens the first time I jump. So we are good. Uh, we have displayed our health, energy, and mood. If you'd like to change the size of those bars, uh, you can go down into your UMG, uh, Game HUD widget blueprint, grab the horizontal box, and just stretch that out just a little bit more, something like that. That looks a little bit better. Um, while we're at it, with the hor horizontal box selected, I'm going to rename this in the details panel to something better than horizontal box. I'm going to call it player status, like so. And then I'm going to minimize it uh, in the hierarchy, because we are done setting up our player status. So let's compile and save and close this blueprint. And then let's just check that out when we play. That looks a little bit better. So there we go. We have created our health, energy, and mood displayed. It is affected by gameplay. We are passing our energy value. Uh, we are actually passing our health, energy, and mood values. But our health and mood we haven't set up to decrement yet or increase. But we are essentially passing those variables to our HUD, and they are being displayed in game. We are going to wrap here. And in the next video, we are going to start working on the display of our inventory menu. So we're going to set up uh, visually how that looks. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next video.